where we're live. The chair notes the time is six o'clock. I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to the meeting. We'll begin with the roll call of the ZBA members and panel for this meeting. Uh, Steve Judge is present. Mr. Craig Meadows? Present. Mr. Everald Henry? Present. Mr. Philip White? Present. Mr. David Slobiter? Present. The quorum is present. Also attending the public hearing tonight is Jacinta Williams, a planner with the town, and we have in attendance also attorney Carolyn Murray of KP Law, who provides us guidance and assistance in this matter. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff, and they may be viewed via the Town of Amherst's YouTube channel and the ZBA webpage. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or for additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen or by pressing star nine on their phone. The chair with the assistance of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition is heard by the board as distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there's a 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, approval of minutes. Approval of meeting minutes from September 19th, 2024, September 26th, 2024, and October 10th, 2024. A public hearing on ZBA FY 2023-18, ASD Shootsbury MA Solar LLC, request for a special permit under section 3.340 of the zoning bylaw to construct a 9.35 megawatt DC 4.4 megawatt AC ground mounted solar voltaic array, array spanning 41 acres on a 102 acre site with accompanying battery storage at three parcels of land owned by WT, WD Cowles Inc. identified as map 9B parcels 11 and 12, map 9D parcel 27 on Shootsbury Road, RO outlying residence zoning district. Frontage and access to the subject parcels of land are located between 187 and 201 Shootsbury Road. This matter is continued from July 25th, 2024. And ZBA FY 2025-04 Wayfinders Inc requests a comprehensive, comprehensive permit under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40B to construct a 31 unit mixed income rental housing on a, in a three story development with 14 proposed parking spots on the premises of 31 Southeast Street, map 15A, parcel 20 in the RVC Village Center Residence Zoning Districts and a 47 unit mixed income rental housing on a three, in a three story building 
with 46 proposed park, I think it's supposed to be 47, but 46 proposed parking spots on the premises of 70 Belchertown Road, map parcel 15C, 50, 58, 15C, 59, 15C, 60, in the RN and FPC neighborhood residence and flood prone conservancy zoning districts. This is continued from October 27th, 2024. Following that, we have a general public comment period to discuss any matters not before the board tonight and other business not anticipated within the last 48 hours. And then adjournment. So the first item on the agenda is consideration of minutes from uh, September 19th, 2024. I've reviewed the minutes uh, September 19th. I had one note, I think, on this. On the, yeah, I had one note on this. Jacinta, there was a uh, on the, the eighth page under plumbing, there's a, the second um, item is storm drainage dash connecting to, and then it ends. And so I think there has to be a connecting to something. Um, and I'm just not sure what that is. Um, okay. So I'm assuming that it's got to be storm drainage connecting to um, the the, the uh, storm management plan um, drainage site, but I'm not sure. So that has to be corrected. Okay. Um, do you know what that is, but of chance? No, I wouldn't. I'd have to go back to look at the, uh, the meeting minutes or the transcription to verify what it, what it is. Well, I, I um, have enough confidence that you can um, do that and accurately put accurately record for the minutes what that is. Is there okay. any, are there any other um, items on the September 19th minutes that people had concerns or corrections about? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes from September 19th with the and give the staff the permission to make uh, the technical change to reflect the discussion regarding storm drainage systems connections. Um, do I have such a motion? I, I hear, I see Craig nodded yes and Mr. Slobiter waved yes, yes so that's a, well, that's a, he, that's a, he didn't know he was muted. So <laughs> yes. Had he, had he not been muted, he would have said so moved. Well, this is the sign for so moved. That's a sign. Your interpretation is right on. Okay. Right. So we got that. We got sign language moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? And I would take closed mouths as a sign that there's no discussion. So in that, the vote occurs on the motion to approve the minutes as amended with uh, technical changes from the staff, technical conformance changes from the staff. The chair votes aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Sloboder? Aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Motion carries five to nothing. Minutes are approved as amended. Second set of minutes is from um, September 26, 2024. I reviewed those minutes and I found nothing. Does anybody have any questions about the minutes from September 26, 2024? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes as submitted from September 26, 2024 meeting. So moved. Second. And it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion to approve the minutes from September 26, 2024. The chair votes aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Slobiter? Aye. And Mr. Henry? Aye. All right, the last set before us is the minutes from October 10th, 2024. Um, there is one, I think, additional area um, again this these are two that I think you um, Miss Williams I think that there are two that, that you want to fit uh, finish the sentence on if we look at the page page seven um, it asks the chair wants to make sure it's financially feasible for the town the chair asks what the risk is of them taking on the project then there's Ehrlich response and I see if you've noted the time when Mr. Ehrlich responded, 
And it's the same thing for the next one uh, about whether utilities are, are or are not included. Again, we had the time for that response, but it's just not listed uh, or it's not described in these minutes. And I, I can tell you, I'm sure that that's what you intended to do. So um, again, I think that if you would, we can either wait and have this done later or give you the authority to um, make those changes um, by describing what discussion took place in those time periods, 147, 48, and 156, 10. There are also some other highlighted sections I had questions about as well. Sure, what are they, Mr. Henley? Yeah. Um, I think on, on my, it's page five, at the top of page five, there's some highlights. All right. see top of page five. Oh, what I don't have any highlights but what what's the uh, description of the or what's the language applicant needs to provide chart comparing inspections yep oh I see yep and then fourth line down Henry asked Miss Williams look into whether or not there are any provisions those are all highlighted on mine oh. me too here's two Okay. Yep, they're highlighted in mine. All right. Yes. All right. So we should. So we the know. highlights are for um. That's these were some things that were taken during the meeting, and that's just my way of keeping track of what we were asking for. That's why they're highlighted. I just didn't remove them. Okay. All right. So the highlights will be removed for the official official minutes. Yes. Um, any other. Comments or questions or concerns? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes, uh, removing the highlights, and uh, describing the conversation uh, on page seven, uh, where we have the minutes notated and the time notated. So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No discussion. Um, the chair votes aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. And Mr. Meadows? Aye. Motion carries. The minutes are approved. Um, the next order of business is ZBA FY 2023-18 ASD Schutzberry MA Solar LLC. Um, do I understand that the applicant wishes to continue this matter and that we have a communication to that effect from the applicant's representative. We do, but I'm looking for Tom and I'm not seeing him. Well, if we have his letter. Yes, we do. And um, the date that I think you mentioned to me was January 28th. January 23rd. January 23rd. All right. That date right. works for me. Um, but what I would like to do is give people a chance. We also have another, uh, let's see, it's myself, Mr. Meadows, Mr. Sloviter, and Mr. Henry are all on this panel, if I'm correct. Mr. White, you're not on the ASD of Shootsbury. That's, that's right. And we only have four members on this panel. So, um, are you, can you guys commit to that date or do you want us to? Do you want some time to think about it and adjust your schedule and get back and pick a date at a later point in time? I get muted. Uh, I'm right now I'm available on the 23rd. I don't see any reason that I can't make it. Okay. So I can I can commit to the 23rd for now. As can I. How about you, Mr. Meadows? You're muted, Mr. Meadows. I realize, but I was looking at my calendar and I am free. Okay. So let's let's put that, um, let's move to continue the Shootsbury Road until the uh, 23rd of January at six o'clock. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So uh, do I have a motion to that effect to continue this matter till the 23rd at six o'clock? So moved so, with audio. <laughs> so it's moved and seconded to continue to the January 23rd. Any discussion? If there's no discussion, the vote occurs on the motion to continue the matter until January 23rd. The chair votes aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Sloboder? Aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Great. Uh, so continue until the 23rd. Uh, I want to note the presence of Nate Malloy on the call as well, the senior planner for the town. All right, the next order of business is um, ZBA FY 2025-04, Wayfinders Inc. requesting a comprehensive permit under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40B to construct 31 mixed income rental units on a three-story development with 14 proposed parking spots on 31 Southeast Street and 47 <coughs> units mixed income rental housing at 70 Belcher Town Road. Um, so we had some questions and request for materials from the applicant. And I'd like to go through those, that first, um, what they submitted. And then what I'd like to do is return to the, to examine the waiver requests that they have. I know there's been some dis further discussion with town staff on waiver requests. And what I'd like to do is work through the waiver requests as much as possible in a public hearing so that we can have back and forth from the applicant not move into the public meeting for that. Uh, tentatively approve those waivers that we are comfortable with. Those that are, we aren't, we'll set aside for a later point in time. See if we can get the, through that. And then I'd like to do the same beginning with the conditions. Now there's 100, almost 100 conditions that the staff has come up with. And so I don't think we can do all of that. We're not gonna be able to do all of that tonight, obviously. So, um, but I'd like to do the same thing. The notion is, Let's work through these waivers and conditions in a public hearing so we can have back and forth with the applicant and then we'll move into the public meeting portion when we decide to make the final decision on those ideas and we can move expeditiously through them in the public hearing after having um, back and forth with, with the applicant. Does that work for everybody and is that an understandable process for the members of the board? Great. Does that work for the applicant as well? Mr. Gruber? Um, we, yes, we, we, can, we can work through the waivers this evening. Um, we received the, um, the, the, the conditions um, just earlier in the week. And I mean, I guess we can see where we get to with the waivers and, and we have not, we had a, not had a chance to review those on our end. We can certainly start the you know, discussion on those. Um, as far as a, a working, but um, so yeah. you're talking about you. You just got the conditions earlier this week. Correct. Yes. All right. The waivers we had before that. Yeah, the waivers are yes. Okay, so um, then I guess we will well, first. Let's proceed with the submitted material uh, from the last meeting. Any questions that we had, uh, and I want to make sure that we have the people representing the applicant um, introduce themselves, Mr. Gruber. And um, you're, t t I, for I'm for I apologize, I oh. forgot. <laughs> um, Ellen Fryman, sorry. I yes, Attorney Fryman, I'm sorry. I changed the label on my box. <laughs> 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 Rename, okay, I'm doing that right now. I, I'm sorry. So no Mr. problem. Mr. Gruber, give us your name and address for the record. Sure, uh, it's uh, James Gruber. Uh, a project manager in the real estate development department representing Wayfinder, 1780 Main Street, Springfield, Massachusetts. And Ms. Fryman? Address is 1441 Main Street, Springfield, Massachusetts. I do want to go through the submissions that are provided by the, um, by the applicant as well as by the town. We received presentation slides from October 17th hearing uh, that was um, there was a request to have the slides that were actually at, uh, presented at the meeting, and they did that. There was a lighting plan revision for both 31 Southeast Street and the 70 Belchertown Road sites. Those are submitted 11-7. A refrigerant piping memo by AKAL Engineering submitted um, on the 7th of November. A typical sign detail was also submitted on 11-7-2024. 
Um, from the staff, we received Belchertown Road waiver requests submitted 11 8 2024. 31 South East Street waiver request submitted 11 8 24. Draft conditions with uh, revisions from 11 8 2024. And just today, we got a, um, uh, I think, a, a marketing plan, affirmative marketing plan from the applicant as well. Um, those are the materials that I have. Are there any other submissions, Ms. Williams, that uh, I should note? No, I think you you listed them all. Okay. So the the first thing is the pre presentation slides. Um, Mr. Chair, if I may interrupt for a second. Absolutely. I, I did not see that marketing plan. Oh, it just it just came in about an hour before an email that I I received about an hour ago. There was an, a mark, an affirmative marketing plan is about eleven pages, and it was attached to an email that I think Mr. Malloy first sent and then Miss Williams resent it. So okay, I, I I found it. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Yes. So I mean I I think we can look at that, but um, it's come at the last minute, so we can't make a decision authoritatively tonight, but we can at least talk about it and they can describe it. Um, so we, we did have presentation slides and anybody have any questions regarding that? I think that just wound up. It was just supposed to help us understand the proposal. All right, no question about the slides. Uh, the lighting plan for both 31 and 70 Belchertown Road did this involve, I mean, one of the price questions that I had with the lighting plan, the previous lighting plan, it was just really hard to read what the, and, and even the printed version is still hard to read, but it seems to me that um, this was supposed to be in response for the questions about uh, light trespass to other properties on um, the Southeast Street uh, site up to the, I guess it would be to the left of the building. Um, is that what is that what this reflects as a change to this to the area uh, to the left of the building, the neighboring property? Uh, or did you make change? Did you talk, this guy yeah. describe if you made changes. Sure, sure, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, and and I'm happy to share my screen, and I can and I maybe I can pan and 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 show where some of those describe some of the. Um, We go. So um, yeah, and here is the uh, here is the Southeast Street site, um, and we did we did make some changes at this site. The um, the the areas of concern were that there was some sort of some you know some very bright areas here with the you know with the with the numbers on them being you know in excess of of seven um, foot candles and and that um in 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 higher than you know uh an anticipated areas like this here where there were two lights um we had our lighting designer relook at everything to minimize um any light trespass you know along the property line and um provided these updated drawings that show um the you know the average the average areas in a, in a more detailed manner as far as the entryway of the parking, um, you know, areas and the, um, in discussions with the lighting consultant and the uh, design firm, and the architect, um, a, a 0 0.1, 0 0.1 is one tenth of uh, the light that a, a, a T light would emit from about a foot away. So, that is considered generally as an in, it's my understanding that's considered um generally as an industry standard as you know um not it's 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 sort of minimal um trespass like the uh, my understanding that is like between 0.1 and 0.5 is anything above that would be considered light trespass but anything below that is is not so this site we didn't really, there wasn't, there wasn't a concern at this site. There's a, a fence along the property line here. And, um, you know, the lights are all downcast and they have, um, 
guards on them so when you look up at the lights you don't see the light you know the it, the emitting light and it also um, helps so that it can control where the um, light is cast so the 31 southeast street was updated for that and it's a uh, you know more more uniform um, lighting on the um, driveway area and then at 70 belcher town road the previous plan um showed the light trespass the this is the property line here is in red and the concern was that the um there was there was light trespass onto the abutting property here um our lighting designer did the same thing with the statistics that are shown here to um you know better delineate what the averages were and what the maximums and mins were in each section and was also able to adjust the the lighting so that we're at a 0 0.1 um, anywhere where it goes over the property line. I had sent this um, this plan to the neighbor as requested by the board. I reached out to them. Um, I I sent them a plan and email, and then I followed up. You know, a few days later with a phone call. I have not heard anything back um, from them on this. Okay. So. In, that was in response to the board's. Um, we had asked you to do that. Thank you. Yes. Um, can I? Go, can we go back to thirty one uh, Southeast Street? Yes. So the red area in front, I guess that'd be east. The red, where all those red markers are. Here. What, yeah. No, up right in front of the the stairs. Yes. So all the way up. Um, I you can't see my cursor, but for the the. The old building, there's the stairs that go up and that area is all, is that highly lit because that's... Um... Yeah, it's my understanding these are dimmable lights and these are a um, an, an XE, which is the, let's see if it's it's on here. They did not put the, um, the can type light or the, like a recess light in. Um, so it's just a, uh, a recess light here in the ceiling that projects down. Okay, and then in front on the ground where we have the plus seven, plus five, plus five, down in front of the stairs, so mm -hmm. towards the street, is that, are those well lit or is that low light? Just, it looks to me like that's well lit. Mm -hmm. Yes, the stairs are, are well lit. Stairs are well lit and the pad in front of it, which is the, um, this area is. Yeah, the patio. Patio, and that's, is that that won't be lit 24 hour 24 7 right is that something that will be lit when in use or is that lit it's, all the time or it's um, it's lit um per the building code um per you know per egress requirements and then um it I, it's i can get the exact numbers that it does go down to in a in a you know in a dimmable state when it's not when it's not activated so it's like motion activated to um you know, reduce, reduce the light when, um, you know, in the evening when someone's not there. Got it. Okay. Uh, well, you'll please keep us informed if you get a response from the neighbor on um, the Belchertown Road site. Okay. Uh, are there any questions about the lighting plan? All right. Um, the next response was on the uh, refrigerant piping memo by AKAL Engineering. And Mr. Meadows, I know you had uh, some interest in this and some concern. Um, you probably are better at describing this or analyzing the the, uh, the document than, than I am. So does this satisfy your request? It, it does satisfy my request. The the length pipe lengths look like they're in uh, in line with what the the recommended piping is with Mitsubishi. Um, I did have a couple of questions. If if you could look further down in that memo, um, there were some areas that were. Well, I can't. It's too small now. Uh, that were marked in with red highlights.
Sorry, but I can't see them now. Um, if you could just ask the engineer what those, uh, those the meaning of those are. Um, yeah. Can't see them right let, now? Uh, let me see. Um, it would um, Ms. Ms. Williams be able to see if there's a um, the Anthony Gray in the um, audience and, and promote them to a panelist? Yes, he's coming into the meeting. One moment. Okay, thank you. Was it was it in this in this area here? Um, it was like in this portion of it. Not these red areas. I'm trying to see where it was. My my engineer who looked at it just wanted to know what those. indicated and uh and then if you could just tell us what accommodations you've made in case there are leaks in the system at all there's a there's a great deal of refrigerant in those pipes and one of the concerns i've always got with uh, this type of piping is that if you get a leak you've got a problem yeah, so every circuit. So, Mr. There, Gray, Mr. Gray, just give us your name and address for the record and then continue. Sorry. Okay, this is Anthony Gray with ACAL Engineering. I'm the mechanical engineer on the project. Yep. So, all of these systems have uh, are, are valved at the branch box. So, mm -hmm. if, there, if there is a leak, it's only going to be like in a certain segment of, of the piping system. It's not like the whole refrigerant of the whole system is going to um, leak out in, in that area. So we do have, have that, um, you know, be, beyond that, the code, the code based on this type of system, the code doesn't require us to put any specific leak detection in, in, um, in this system. If that's something that you guys want us to look at, we certainly can do that. Um, but you know our our system right now is is going to be designed per code, which doesn't require any refrigerant leak detection for this type of system. I uh, I think it would be a good idea to take a look and see if you can determine if it you can manage to get leak detection in. Yeah. In this system. Sure, we can we can look at it. I will say that it's not it's not typical, um, but certainly we can look at it. It's atypical. Thank you. And were you able to locate where those um, where those areas were that your engineer had a, a question on, and, and maybe we can? Um... No, I'll, I'll I'll give her a call during the break and see if uh, she can tell me where that is. Okay. Any other uh, discussion or regarding the the memo on the um, piping and the refrigerant for the HVAC system? All right. And Mr. Meadows, if you do get additional information, um, we, can, we obviously can return to this topic at a later point. Thank you. Um, and then we had, uh, you sent us a sign detail as well. So, um, is is that the sign this it has um there it is is that what you intend to use or is that just a you know a placeholder for what um what you may or may not use and just a placeholder can you tell us yeah that's that's generally the sign um would would be you know similar to this we we do not have a sign um, design, but this is this would be um, similar and along the lines that our marketing department would typically um, design something generally like this at our other developments. So this is a placeholder. There is a um, sort of a 
I guess, a symbol or an icon, you know, for the development and then the development name would be located here with the, um, you know, with the address. Okay, so the design of the actual, the lettering and logo on the, on the board may vary, but the sign, the shape and the size is what you would like for a permanent sign, correct? Correct. Okay, so then when we, so for your sign plan, um, I don't know, this, this would have to be included in your sign plan and then Ms. Williams, we'd want to say something to the effect that the sign uh, comports with that in the sign plan and um, allowing minor changes to be approved, minor changes, including the, you know, the, the actual words on the uh, and name of the um, development can be approved by the building commissioner um, if he feels it's minimal. Or any changes to that can be approved by the building commissioner if you feel this minimal is what I would, how I would approach this, not requiring you to come back to us with uh, another sign design if this type of sign is what the board approves. Does that make sense, Mr. Gruber? Yes. Okay. Any concerns from board members about, there'd be one sign like this for permanently in front of each, on each site, and then there are provisions for temporary signs for during construction that's in the conditions, but, but this is your per, your two permanent signs would be these, right? That that's correct. Yes. All right. Yep. And then lastly, uh, I think that's, that is what lastly was the, um, the marketing plan that we received late today. And do you want to run, do you want to run through that with us? Or is this something that we should, do you want us to, and I'd like to see what the board thinks too as well. It's 11 pages, it's pretty detailed. I haven't had a chance to, to review it. Um, is this something that you want to talk a little bit about and give us a night, an overview, but I don't think we'd be prepared to approve it or discuss it discuss it in great depth uh, today because we just haven't had a chance to review it. So Mr. Well, Green, why, don't we, why don't you give us an, up, you know, an overview and then any uh, questions that people have we can answer, but knowing that we'll have to go back and look at it at a later point. Um, yeah, so the, the affirmative um, fair marketing you know, housing plan that was submitted I, was, um, is a sample and is something similar and was um, submitted after you know, the meeting where, where we discussed that. And um, generally it's reviewed by the funding agencies. Then they all, every, you know, they, they, they review that to make sure that it's in, you know, in conformance with, with their, their requirements. So it is one of those things. I'm happy to go over that with you. Um, the, if, if there's any questions on it, you know, and, but it's, um, so it's not definitely. something you're going to have, it's not something you're going to have finalized when, by the time we complete the comprehensive permit, because it has to be approved by the funding. Yes. Agents. Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. And there's a, and yes. And okay. there's a lot of back and forth that goes in, in, in that, that gets tweaked and changed many, many times in the course of the financial closing process leading up until the construction. And that's not finalized typically until we we close on the on 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 the development on the project, the financial closing. And you'd be required to submit the final approved marketing plan to the town if I'm correct, if I read the conditions correctly. Is that right? The town would have a copy of it. We can give the town a copy. Yeah, I think I think that's one of the conditions. Um, I think that's one of the conditions uh, that's at least been discussed. Okay. Mr. Henry, I know that you were interested in this. Um, do you want to take a look at this and, at, and have questions ready for the next meeting or are you prepared to ask some questions now? No, I think we should just um, move on for now and we can talk about the next meeting. Okay. That's a deal. All right. Um, I had a couple of things from 
um, the last meeting before we go into to waivers to follow up. So um, the first was was staffing. I went I went back to the management plan narrative that or they went to your management plan and the management plan says see management plan narrative and i think that still the effective management plan is the one that's in the it says see the management plan narrative and i was looking at staffing and i and i remembered the conversation that the discussion that we had at the last meeting about how you staff um 30 hours a week approximately wednesdays off you try to have some time during um during the weekend for people to make phone calls into uh, the staff. And my concern at, at the last meeting was we've got a lot of, a lot of these units will be occupied by people working nine to five jobs. Some of them will be working other hours, but a lot of them will be nine to five jobs. And it may be very difficult for them to, um, to have access to people, the resident assistants to have access um, outside of you know normal business hours and your person that worked on that said well we'll we can be flexible we like to have about 30 hours of, of time there and that's not reflected in the management plan narrative in any way that you intend to have a pro and i'm not whole i don't think it's our job to hold you to how many hours a week you got to have people on you know in on uh, on site what their hours have to be what their level is but I think it would be really valuable if you would make an attempt to um, to show aspirate at least aspirationally what your intention is to try to accommodate those people that work nine to five jobs and can't deal with the resident assistance person um, during the day because they there are jobs. And so, some way, I'd, I'd like to see the um, the management plan for staffing be changed to reflect what your intent is and how you might be, um, deal with that. Because I think you're, I think the description, the representation that we had at the meeting last time was good. And we'll, so I'm operating on that representation, but I'd like to see that representation reflected in the management plan narrative. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and I'm happy to uh, send a revised management yeah. plan narrative that includes something more along the lines of what our, um, you know, our, the, our staff had, had mentioned at the, at the, at the last meeting, because that's what the intent is. So yeah, that's the intent. So that'd be good to have that management plan narrative. I'd like to have that follow through. That's one thing. Thank you. We look forward to that. Um, On the parking plan, again, you just said we're going to manage it. Are you? Do you intend to have stickers? Do you have hangers? Are you going to have how? It's for especially for the Belchertown Road site, which you have you know forty seven places, and there's a possibility that people might decide that oh that's a big parking lot, and there's a bus stop right over there, and I don't have to go all the way downtown. I'm going to throw my car in there, even though he's not a resident, and then um, jump on the bus to. To school or to work or whatever, um, and get free park, quote unquote, free parking. So, what have you? Just, how are you going to approach that? Is it, are you just going to manage it by visual? Are you going to manage it by hangers? Are you going to manage it by a sticker on the car? How are you going to do that? Um, yeah, it's my understanding that it would be some, you know, permanent parking with, you know, with a sticker or, or some some way to identify the vehicles for the on-site staff to be able to. Um, Right. You know, I guess monitor that area and 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 just uh, you did say forty seven. There, there's forty seven units and there's fifty two spaces there. Fifty two spaces, right? That's right. Thank you. Um, those numbers have changed, and I, I can't keep them straight. <laughs> yeah. So that's great, and I think that should be put in the parking plan narrative. Then something that to the effect that we will have a system that identifies individual cars that are approved. And you don't have to tell me if you're going to have a hanger or you're going to have a sticker. That's up to you guys. But some you, you're going to have a um, system to identify which cars belong there. So put that yes. in the parking plan narrative. Okay. Yes, they have to be registered with uh, with our property management. Yep. So yeah, yep. nothing about that. Yep. Um, 
another thing that came up in some discussions is people are going to take their, in, especially in Belchertown, people will take their trash down to the big trash area and put it in the, where there's the enclosure and there's the big dumpsters. And they're going to have to walk through the whole building to get out downtown, uh, get out, get out of the building, walk to the dumpster. If we, if we can put a picture of the, um, if you have a picture of the, of the first floor of the Belcher town. Yep. Hold, hold on. Here. Yep. Hold on one moment. My concern is that that's a really long way to carry your garbage. If you're just doing a couple of bags, it's leaky, you know, garbage is not always the easiest thing. And, and it may be a long ways. I'm wondering if you have an idea of putting a, some type of carrier or um, a bear, a, a, kind of like a wheel, not a wheelbarrow, but some kind of a way for people to, to move their, their uh, garbage and trash more easily than trying to carry it through that whole building and then outside and drop it in the, the trash area. I'm trying to think about how, what's the most efficient way to do that and where, where would you store such a thing? Right. So, um, and, and yeah, this came up, I think in discussions at, at, at some point and, um, we looked into this and, you know, we discussed it with our, our property management, um, team and their, you know, their, their response is, is that if this, this type of, you know, the trash and, and, and how you, you know, and how you, you, you take care of it is, is just that the, residents just need to be educated on how to do that. Um, we do make special accommodations for some residents if they if they need that. Um, but at our other properties, such as um, the building that I'm in um, right now is is a similar property and it's you know it's about 377 feet from can you see my screen? So, so here's, here's the, this is a, this is a four story building on, um, on Pleasant Street in Northampton. And this is, this is pretty much the corridor path here along the way down the elevator out to the dumpster. And it's about 377 feet. Um, so it's, it's similar. We don't have any issues here. There's on-site property management to clean up anything that, um, that, you know, that rips or that tears or if there's an issue and uh, you know another one of our sites at um at olympia oaks and amherst granted um this is you know 550 or so feet to the dumpster from the the furthest unit and you know we're proposing the furthest the furthest distance here would be you know roughly 380 390 feet similar to the building that i'm in so we don't see this as an issue necessarily, and, but if there it becomes an issue, it's something that our management staff will um, will address, um, you know, based on the situation that they're that they're um, you know faced with, I guess. Okay, so you've seen you have a experience with these long runs in other properties, and you figured out a way to deal with it if you need to. Is that that's is, yes. That's, Thing. Yes, and this is what yes, this is typical. And the way you deal with it is, if you any way you haven't had to deal with it is what you're telling me, is right? You to put in some kind of a a carrier so people can move their trash more easily. All right. Um. All right. And the, they had the same kind of question about laundry. Um, you know, they're going to be taking laundry down in some kind of a little laundry cart or some sort. Um, could be stored in the laundry room that people could gather it. Have you thought, do you do that? Is that something that's done? I, all right, well, number one, I guess, have you given any more thought to whether there's more laundry facilities or not? The, from the last meeting, it seems to me that you were comfortable with the uh, laundry facilities all being on the first floor, all being in one space. And that's what you your preference would be. And so that, we, yes. And we, that's correct, right? That, that is correct, yes. And um, so then we just have the question of, are there a lot, you know, going back and forth the 360, not 360 feet, but 200 and some feet from the farthest um, apartment to the laundry facility. Do you think about how do you deal with that at your other properties? 
Do people just buy their own bags and carry them? Is that what they do? Or do you have like a laundry cart or anything like that? Yeah, I don't, I don't believe we have a laundry cart. I, you know, I think people are, will take their own laundry to the, you know, to the laundry similar to someone at, you know, at another rental um, building that would have to take their laundry to a laundry mat or somewhere else, whereas this is on site. Okay. Um, and the lastly, if on this, again, towards the management plan and our, our, uh, I think our good meeting last week or last time you had, uh, representations about how quickly you would get the snow off, um, and, and how, you know, what it would take to move, to move, remove snow, how many inches that would be. Um, uh, and there's not very much in the, in the management narrative about snow removal, except that you, you put it in certain places and then you take it off if there's a lot. And your guy talked about four and a half inches, six inches. And I think it'd be helpful to have more, a more fulsome discover, discussion about when you are going to take the, the snow off the property um, than, you, than you have in the narrative plan, in the management plan narrative, excuse me. It would, it just, it would represent again what your guy talked about at the last meeting, which made sense to me. Um, and again, it's not a hard and fast number. I don't think if it's 10.1 inches, you're in violation of your comprehensive permit, but it gives a, shows that this is what your, your, your intention is about uh, removing snow when it gets to be so high. And it shows that you've thought through, yeah, when it's, we have that much snow, we don't have very much room, especially at the Southeast site. So I, I'd like to, if you'd review that, um, and I think it would be helpful to, uh, you know, give a more fulsome description of the snow removal process in your management narrative. Yep. I mean, that's something, that's something I can take a look at. I am, I am a little concerned though, because it, I believe that the, the management plan says that when it, you know, when it becomes, as you had mentioned, when there becomes a stockpile of it being too much, it would be trucked off site to describe how that happens is difficult because it's going to be, it, it, it's, it's very dependent on the weather. You might get a, you know, a 10 inch storm, you plow up the snow banks and it's, you know, it's very light snow. So it's a small storm, right? And, or it, 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 it it's a small pile, or you have a, you know, a warm spell for a number of days and it all melts and that sort of thing. The, the intent of wayfinders is to, if, if it, you know, if it's, if it's an issue to, to remove it from site. And, um, I, I, I'm happy to I'm happy to revise that. I just I just want to make be be clear that I I want to make sure you know what sort of detail you're looking for that to be revised to. I'm, uh, I I would I, I guess I looked at it and I thought it was less than fulsome. So um, when I'm looking at I'm trying to find it here. It says uh, we'll contract with a third party. We want to clear the walks. Compliance with local di rules dictate we have we clear the snow from the sidewalks. Um, porous, we have porous bituminous pavement. Um, we anticipate that on-site on -site snow storage will suffice with snow storage areas depicted on the site. In exhibit six, however, if necessary, excess snow will be transported off-site. Um, that's all I said. We got, we got one sentence on, on that. I just thought it made sense to do more what you, what you just talked about. Okay. So that, you know, so that's there. Um, all right. That'd be great. And lastly, um, we already talked about the signs. That's everything that I had from uh, last meeting. Do other people have other questions and follow up from the last from our last meeting? All right. Um, if not, I think we could go to. Um, discussion of the waivers. And so the way, I, as I said, the way I thought it made the most sense to discuss the waivers requests from the applicant is to run through them, identify those that we think are not a problem, um, and then identify those that we may have a, a, a problem with or we need more clarification or there has to be some work done on them, and do that in the public hearing section where we can uh, have a conversation about it. All right. So let's start, can we start with the waivers on um, Southeast Street? Yeah. 
And Miss Williams and Mr. Malloy, um, I know that you've also, and Miss Murray, you've also all worked on these. So feel free to um, to it to it add to our discussion if you think we're missing something here or there's a potential waiver problem that we did not um, identify. So the the first waiver request is prohibited use. You you want to waive the requirement that um, currently under the bylaw that does not allow for the development of multifamily units of containing 31 units on a single lot. Obviously, I mean, that's a waiver you need to get for this. Um, second waiver really just kind of describes the um, the type of units that are in the in the uh, in the building and normally you have a limit on the um, well what they have is a limit on the number of total number of units you can have under section 3.323 and that has to be waived um, and no more than 50% of the units can be of a certain dwelling size. And again, you're going to have more than that. So you have to waive that in order to allow your um, project to, to continue, I mean, to be built, I think. And on this one, at the end of that waiver request, let's see. It mentions a management plan as defined in form and content. I just want to make sure that it, one of the your waiver requests is to waive the requirements of 3.323. And one of the things in 3.323 is that you have a management plan as defined in the terms and form and context and the rules and regulations adopted by the permit granting authority, that's us. And that shall be included as an integral part. Other areas of the of the um, the application have a reference to a management plan, and I want to make sure. And perhaps um, Attorney Murray can help me here. I want to make sure that by waiving this section, we're not waiving the requirement for a management plan. You see that on the next page. Uh, if you can go to one more page down, um, Miss Williams. Here, it says in that that portion of the it, is, it requires a, a management plan. And I want to make sure that we're not inadvertently waiving the requirement for a management plan. If I may um, just yep. add a comment. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so we would we wanted to be specific um, in, in as far as what we were um, zeroing in on, which was to, um, with, as you mentioned, regarding the number of units and also the permits that we would otherwise be required. So waiving it. So we were specific in the section portion of that section that we were asking to, um, be, have waivers from. So, so you're, you really just want to be, you want to waive, um, we don't have yeah. the to allow the number of units that we're um, yep. proposing and units. also to um, proceed without the, the requirement to have the site separate design review and special permit. Right, separate design review, right. Okay, Ms. Murray, can you um, work that out in the, in the waiver? I certainly can, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay. And one thing I would just to to follow up on um, Attorney Fryman's comment about uh, the design review standards or a waiver from the design review process, where those fall under separate sections of the zoning bylaw, uh, where you see sections 3.2040 and 3.2041, I think we should all they should be a separate waiver request from those sections explicitly. Okay. All right. So who's who's going to draft that? I just want to make sure that gets done. 
I think between myself and Attorney Fryman, we can probably work out this language for uh, the board's further review. All right, great. The next is wait, and please board members, if you have a question or a comment on any of this, please uh, just interrupt, because I'm looking at paper and not at the small little pictures, uh, representations of you on the, on the screen. Um, number <laughs> three is a side yard setback for a shed. Uh, we've seen that on the drawings. It just means that it's going to be closer and it's going to be higher than it would normally be allowed in the, in the town. And I think they need that for um, uh, materials and, 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 and equipment storage. I don't have any problems with that waiver. Mr. So, Mr. Chair, Mr. Yeah. Chair, I just asked a question on that one because um, they're, they're asking to include, um, you know, a shed of 10 feet. Um, or they're saying that it'll be 10 and 12 feet high and it'll be 10 feet from the property line. Right. If it's 10 feet high and 10 feet from the property line, then it complies. It the way it. <laughs> so right. I, I don't know whether they want to think about, are they committing to a particular size of shed or at this point, do they want to commit to, it's going to be a 12 foot high shed located 10 feet off the property line. You don't have a design for that a finalized design for that shed yet, is that right? Those, yeah, those are those are like a prefabricated shed, um, typically that we would we would purchase, and they range in height. That's why the range was was placed in there to to allow for a little variation depending on, um, you know, where that where that item was to be sourced from. So it's we can we can adjust as needed, but yeah, instead of saying single story, we can put the specific height there. Well, not specific, but the range. Isn't that what you proposed, 10 to 12 feet? Right, but I'm just saying in the waiver, we just referred to it as a single story if that was the issue. Well, no, I think the issue is that it might be 12 feet, so. Um, right, so I'm saying we would say 10 to 12 feet as opposed to one story, if that makes it clear. Right. That's what I see in the proposed language before me. That, Gives them some flexibility, doesn't it, Attorney Murray? It, it certainly does. Like I said, if the board's inclined to grant the waiver and it ultimately turns out that they um, put a 10 foot high shed 10 feet off the property line and the waiver was not needed, uh, it's really no harm, no foul. Right. Perfect. So I don't have a problem with three, uh, with number four, um, it's fence height. I think that's been indicated on the site plans i i am not troubled by the fence height waiver um i don't think the town the staff is and i haven't heard any concern from board members number waiver five is fences again um they, they would need a building permit to install uh, a, a a temporary fence, and I, that's something that we're, I think we don't need to have that done. Um, as part, it can be done as part of the comprehensive permit, um, unless staff has a problem with that. I've not heard it. Number six is additional lot. I mean, this number seven is basic minimum front. Okay, we'll, we'll stay with six. Six is the additional lot area. Um, it's more dense than it would other, otherwise be allowed, and we have to waive that, require, that uh, requirement of the zoning bylaw in order to allow the building to be built as per the site design. Number seven is the um, dimensional regulations, minimum front yard setback. They actually are going closer to the street, um, and the narrative says they're doing that because the town wants to create sort of a village feel as opposed to having it set back farther. It also gives them more parking in the back. Um, I think Mr. Malloy, you've had some discussion with them about this. Is that correct? Is Nate on? Ms. Williams, do you know if that's the rationale behind this? I don't, we would have to have Mr. Malloy oh. confirmed that. I am on it. What is the question about the front setback? Yeah, yeah. The reason you're, you're they're closer than 15 feet is because trying to 
creates more of a village feel. Is that right? Right. And in the program we had for the site, try to fit a lot on there. And so, yeah. um, yeah, it, it, that's what it needs to be. Um, and then there's the common, you know, it, there's a, a, a wide right of way in front of that, uh, yep. property. Yep. All right. And same thing in the rear, you got the minimum side set back and you just needs to be closer to the, to the, uh, yep. property line in order to allow the building to be built. Right. Right. Okay. That's number eight. So it's seven and eight. Number nine is again, another dimensional regulation. This is again on you know, mean roof height is 35 feet and they want to go up to um, mean height of 36, but the uh, penthouse is 39 feet. Um, it's part of the design. I think it has to be, it has to be accommodated. Otherwise the, the, the building doesn't work. Parking. Um, We've had a lot of discussion about parking, um, but it, there's no way there's enough land to uh, provide for two parking spaces. And they're going to work on um, towns parking. And one of the conditions is that the developer work with the town to try to find some way to um, increase the amount of residential parking on public streets in that area. But um, this does allow 14 on site parking spaces for. 31 units, which is substantially less than what would be normally allowed, normally required, I mean. Waiver 11 is again parking. It's, it's a setback uh, issue. Again, it's on the, a small lot. So it would allow them to be developed within five feet of the building, uh, which normally I think it's it's eight feet, um, with, which is the restriction. Uh, again, it's just, it's a case of the, we've got really tight space. And number 12 is design standards and landscape standards. Um, compliant with the street and site work construction standard adopted by the town council. Um, Wave compliance with the street and site work standard. So how different, I guess the question I have is how different is the project plans from what's required by the, uh, the site work construction standards adopted by the town council. What are we waiving here? Well, there are no, there are no standards as far as we understand. Um, can staff confirm that or respond to that? Yeah, we have not located uh, those standards. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> there had been some, there had been some older ones uh, you know, decades old, but nothing that was more recent. So, you know, they had a curb radii, which I think is um, maybe another waiver. But other than that, there really isn't any uh, anything that we could tell. But without knowing what those standards are, then we have wow. this waiver request. You're not concerned about that waiver? Okay. No. All right. The curb, and then it goes to the curb radius question. You just mentioned that. That's the next waiver. Um, one way used to be 18 feet wide. This is 12 foot curb radius at the driveway apron and allow a 12 foot curb radius. Uh, and the curb radius shall be a minimum of 15 feet normally. And that's just because again, the, so the property is, is um, there's not a lot of property there. And this is, a, the traffic engineer doesn't think this is dangerous. Do you support this? What you guys support yeah. the waiver? Town. Yeah, the the town engineer had no problem with this. Okay. Especially because the the street in front of this is one way, so it's one way south, so you turn right in, turn right out, and so that it it works with the, you know, the limited curb radius. And the waiver the, the next Mr. Sloviter? I I have a question about yeah. 13. So it calls for an 18 feet wide for two-way use but if you turn right to go in and you turn right when you come out that's that's a two-way use right you can you can both enter and leave the property in fact you have to enter and leave the property there so how is a 12-foot curb adequate for two cars is is there a site plan that could be shown? 
Yes, and I'd just like to hop in here too and say we're not requesting a um, a waiver from the 18 foot wide um, travel access aisle. We're we're talking about the curb radius. That's the the kind of the corner um, by the by where it you know meets the meets the street. There's there's I believe that that's in excess of 18 feet at the at the entrance but let me pull up the site plan and we can but if if you're asking if 12 feet is an exception what is it an what is it an exception to an alternative to it's 15. not an alternative to an 18 foot wide uh traffic way is it no, yeah, it's, it's a 15 feet, I think, Mr. Slover. Pardon it's me? a waiver to it's a waiver to the arc of the curb on the driveway apron. So usually if you have a bigger radius, you have a more, you know, a longer curve section where the road and the driveway curve to meet each other. And a shorter radius means it's a tighter turn. So it's not as gradual of an apron opening. It's a it's a shorter um, you know, curve. And that's where I think a, a site plan would be helpful just so it illustrates what that waivers showing i am sharing that right now are you able to see my screen yep yes okay so let's see great so can you see my cursor here this is yeah. a, this is a larger curb radius here. This is the twelve foot radius. So it's it's this this is from ah. twelve foot circle right here, and that's what the um that's what that that's what that waiver request is. It's oh, okay. The the eighteen feet for the travel lane between it, the two that that that's still eighteen feet, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Thank you. That answers yep. it. Thank you. Thank you. That clears that up. Thank you. Yep. Um, the ne last waiver, the next waiver is waiver 14 dealing with parking screening. The requirements under the bylaw um, provide effective screening and parking areas to adjacent streets and properties. Um, and if you hope, pull the um, site plan up again, I think that would help us with your request. Mm -hmm. So your the screening is um, you you can't screen in the back parking lot because that's not I mean that's all going to be fields and. If you screen there, then you, you've, imp you've imposed upon the parking area back there. Is that correct? That's one of the areas that you. Yes. Yes. You that, don't that have is... additional screening because it goes into a, 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 a field of our meadow and not into yeah. property. Is that correct? Yes. And there's vegetation on the on the opposite side of, you know, where this existing fence is here. And where there's houses. Yeah. Right. The houses are yeah, back up over here and there's a field over in this in this area here and you don't have screening in the front where um there you just light trespass from the cars would just go onto your own and against the building here yes no not there i mean right in front of, right in back of the um the transformer or the energy square right here. Yeah. right here yep Cur 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 this is a landscape area here but yes there's there's a, there's a walkway here and then and this is the uh, community room here but there's no reason for screening so that's is that the reason you're looking for the waiver um yes because in this in this area here it's it's just we have a you know we we, we provide a six foot high fence and some plantings along this you know this area here around in this area there's not additional plantings however there's existing vegetation on the opposite you know on the opposite properties within the you know wetland area got it any questions regarding that from the board waiver 15 is um 
allows you to, to have bicycle racks indoors. For, yes, to, to allow the, the, the bicycle racks that are shown on the plans, the outdoor racks are here and in inside um, in the um, lower level here, that's there's a, a bike room with storage for um, for, for 31 bikes. All right. And um, the waiver 16 is sign regulations. We've kind of talked about that. You want to waive um, signage on the project plans that do not comply with the bylaw for development form substance interventions shown in the project plans. Does that sign that you showed us not meet the um, bylaw requirements on a permanent sign? Is it too large? I don't believe it's too large. It may be uh, in in it may be more than thirty inch or less than thirty inches from the sidewalk. So it's it's shown it's shown closer to the front here. If I am so it's to it's to allow for the sign as shown on the plans here. Well the waivers request is to waive all for form substance dimensions shown on the project plan. Um, I don't you know I don't want to waive all that. I you just want to waive the the placement, right? You're not asking for a sign that is that viol the sign in and of itself violates the the zoning bylaw. You're asking to be able to place the sign in a place where the zoning bylaw would not otherwise allow you to place the sign. Am I reading? You can make that more specific and yeah. ident identify that. Yeah. And then, okay, any other, any questions regarding that? I'll move to 17, if not. Um, this would allow, 17 would allow you to install a temporary project sign of a, of a given size. Um, and I, I have no problem advertising that this thing is going up and who's building it and and uh, who's funding it. I think that's a good thing. And, I get, and 18 is also signage. So why do you not want building commission approval of additional signage? You've got one temporary project sign in 18 and one temporary project sign on 17. 17 is where it wants to be placed. It seems to me that if you want to have a... a it would be fine for additional signs, but we didn't want to go through the process with regard to the signage that we're proposing now. You we don't want to say that again? We didn't want to have the separate approval process for the signage that we're proposing now. If we, as you mentioned earlier, if we have additional signage or changes, we will ha be happy to ha go through the building commissioner to do that. Okay, it's just, but the waiver request is you can do it without separate building commissioner approval. Right, am I reading this wrong? To install one temporary sign of a certain size constructed of plywood without separate building commissioner approval. Right, that's what we're asking for. And you don't wanna have the building commissioner approve your temporary sign? We want it as part of this process. It, well, it's part of the comp permit and not have to go through a separate approval process. It's, it's but it's if this is minimal, it, Right. Yeah. Mr. Yep. Mr. Chair, if I if I may, I think one of the other reasons for this waiver is that the building commissioner can grant a temporary sign, um, provided uh, a maximum of a three week duration. They oh. actually want this temporary sign to be up for the duration of the construction. But we don't have. So you want us to approve a sign that we haven't seen, and we don't want us and for a longer period than the town would allow. 
and not to have the building commissioner look at it. Right? <laughs> that's, we're asking. Yeah, that's, um, that's kind of what it is. I, I mean, like I think we, we can create the the um, criteria on which we would have that sign. It's a typical sign that has all the lenders on it and, you know, the yeah, finding. All that kind of good stuff. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think that should be there. I mean, believe me, but, you know, I just, I want to see what you this is do. This is a typical yeah. construction sign. And this is what I think is what you would expect and what you had described. And is that seem? That's fine. And Mr. Uh, Malloy or Ms. Williams, what does the building commissioner think about this? Do they need to approve it? Yeah, so typically we would even on our the town projects on funded with block grant or mass works, we would have to have a project sign that size that could stay up for, you know, four months. And so uh, we know, you know, temporary might be the length of the project, but it's not a permanent sign that remains after, right. you know, the project's complete. So but you don't, we don't need to have approval. So you're not worried about it not being approved by the building commissioner? No. Okay. All right. Um, 19 is site plan review. Talk about there's no reason that you need site plan review with this should be done as part of the comprehensive permit. Actually, Mr. Chair, yeah. if, I, if I may on this one, um, in this particular zoning district, apartments, the use would be subject to site plan review. So I, I think it would be prudent to just waive the site plan review and just say that the this whole comprehensive permit process, quite frankly, is a more intense site yeah. plan review process. So grant the waiver, grant waiver 19. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I agree. Um, to create driveway access without any applicable fees is, and the ZBX in place of permitting authorities in the conference of permit serves as master permit. So is this, is this a curb cut issue? Is that what this number 20 is? And would there normally be fees paid to the town for a curb cut? Is that what this is all about? And is the curb cut regulated as to where it can be cut and all that? And are we waiving all that? And because it's because it's in the site plan, the approved site plan, is that the thinking here? Yes, yes, right? Is it, unless the town has a, That's a problem with this, um, this seems to be facilitate the completion of the project. It, do we lose fees? How much are we losing in fees? Would Nate or Ms. Williams or Mr. Malloy know? I don't know, you know, right now what that would be. Um, All right, well, we, you know, when, when staff reviewed this, we don't we don't have a we don't have a problem with um, this waiver. You know, there are some other ones where we didn't want to waive the fee. Yeah. But this one, it was acceptable, too. OK. And then we have wetlands waivers on the uh, free wetland waiver requirements. And my question is, I just want to make sure that ComCom is OK with all of this. And if they are, then these waivers don't bother me but there are waivers that the wetlands and the ComCom have to decide on and have to bless. So are you, have Com, does ComCom agree with this? Do we know? Yeah, the Conservation Commission approved the Southeast Street site already. And I think they were ready to move on the Belchertown Road but they had a quorum issue at the recent meeting. So they're, the Conservation Commission is comfortable approving both site plans. All right, so then waivers 21, 22, and 23 are without objection from ComCon. Right. Okay. Um, 24, um, waive compliance and separate approvals, permits, and fees with the town's stormwater management bylaw. That is not something I'm familiar with. It's a stormwater management bylaw. So is this, is Number 24 of concern to the town. Uh, no, not at this time. 
they they have to have you know they're meeting DEP best management practices. They have you know they'll have have to comply with what they've uh, provided to the conservation commission and the notice of intent. And so um, you know they have as part of the review was you know like the the TSS removal, um, storage and release of stormwater. So the town's satisfied with all of that. Okay. Any concerns from the members? All right. If not, number 12, I mean, number 25 deals with uh, demolition of, of potentially historic significant buildings. I, I don't know what that is um, on this site that is being demolished, but. Um, so, Mr. so Mr. Chair, if I may, I had a similar question because I didn't realize we were demolishing a building, but um, Attorney Fryman had brought to my attention um, how demolition is actually defined and the definition includes the act of pulling down, destroying, removing, or raising 25% or more of the front, back, or side elevations of a building. And I, um, it appears that at least with respect to the existing school building, one facade is going to have to be taken down for connection purposes. So it's not your typical demolition delay of a historic building. Got it. That has to be done to, for the project to go forward. It has currently drafted. Yep. Correct. The next one deals with um, sewer use regulation approval. This one I am a little more concerned with. Uh, what you're really saying is you, you just want to have input into the permit process as opposed to getting the Department of Public Works to approve your sewer connection. Um, and I don't know why we wouldn't require, I don't know why we waive the requirement that the Public Works Department approve the sewer and water connection. Well, our, our request was just related to the fact that the comp permit by definition incorporates all local permits. So we're just asking that this also be part of incorporated as part of the, you know, that that permit, local permit be granted as part of the comp permit but, so that we're not going and seeking separate permits. But how do I make sure that you're complying with the requirements of the town if we waive the requirement for the town to approve the sewer connection? Well, originally, I believe plans were furnished to the different departments to review. Um, I believe there's been input or at least an opportunity for them to have input into their plans. This is the same, this is kind of the same question I have on 27. Does it, is it a, a long delay? Is it expensive to get the approval? I mean, it, again, just by the nature of this permit, by calling it a comprehensive permit, sure. it, no, it eliminates the need to have to go get separate permits. We can just hit the ground running with a building permit once we're finished. Um, with the comp permit process other than state permits. Sure, that's, you know, but. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yeah. Um, so Clear up I, for me how we're gonna make sure that, that the town is comfortable with the connections to the town sewer and town water system. So if, if I may, with respect to those two waivers, I mean, obviously the board, it, it's within your discretion as to whether or not you wanna grant these waivers. Right. So if you were uh, inclined to reject those waivers, they would have to go through um, the, the normal process for permitting and payment of fees, et cetera. Another thought is if you're inclined to grant these specific waivers, and yes, the comprehensive permit acts as the master permit, including for sewer and water connections, we could still require, however, as a condition of the comprehensive permit, that they still need to submit an application to the Department of Public Works and that the Department of Public Works still has to, uh, either that they have to meet DPW standards um, or um, you know something to the effect that DPW shall review and approve, which approval shall not be unreasonably withheld. You know, so that there's an understanding that, yes, DPW has the technical expertise to make sure you've got the right size pipe, for example, um, but DPW cannot deny the water or sewer connection permit itself. So either way, we can handle it depending upon the, the will of the board. Do that as a, as a condition. Yes. 
It makes sense to I I I just think we have to have DPW review over this. It, it's mm -hmm. I mean it's a it's a town service. It, it's town water and town sewer. And I don't I don't think you are trying to get to to get away with something here. It's just that normally every you know every town should require that. All right. So I'm um, trying to streamline the processes. What this. The goal is so. yep the goal i i like streamlining that's why we have a comprehensive permit that's the whole idea here but um we don't want to waive something that i think is in the public interest okay. can we ask you a question and what yep. about um a review now before the comp permits issued to have them sign off on it if you can get that done before that would be great then we'll include it as and then it becomes part of the record okay they, I don't know what they've already seen. Maybe they've already um, have reviewed. I'm not sure, but right. we, okay, we, we can explore that. Okay. Explore that. If not, um, mm -hmm. then we'll have, we'll look for a condition to require the approval without um, unreasonable delay. And then the last two are um, planning development guidelines uh, for separate tree warmer approval to waive compliance with the Amherst landscape guidelines. Um, removal and planning is shown on project plans. Uh, you know, you, as far as I'm concerned, you've shown which trees are going to be removed on the site plans. There weren't any concern about that. I don't know why I would have a further review of the of the trees on the site. All right, and the last one is development plans. To allow waivers to requirements in local bylaws and regulations relating to dimensional use requirements to the extent necessary to build a project. Project as presented on this project plans and any subsequent amendments that may be subject to permitting authority and are so approved. That, that just, I read that and it looks like that's just a, a, a big blanket waiver of almost anything. Is it, what's, the, what's the purpose of this waiver request? We have seen it in other decisions that have been issued by the CBA, um, and I, I think you know it, it's a catch-all. Yeah, it's um, you've re reviewed the plans, and you're basically saying yes, we've approved the plans. If we've missed something or have something incorrect, we're granting it because we've approved the you know by virtue of approving the plans, it incorporates the waiver. But does this bypass any review by the building commissioner if we say yes to this provision? We're not going to ch we're not changing anything. We're not changing any of the any anything that has been submitted and approved by this board. We're not changing anything. That would have another process. We're just saying you've signed off on everything that we've submitted, and we've um, identified all the waivers that we believe are appropriate. If something is was is just inaccurate, but not not changing the plans is again just a catch all. And and what if you have to do something with the plans? What if you have to change the plans during? Then some... we come back. We have a, there's a process for that. Okay. Well, uh, waivers to can't apply. change anything without coming back to you and asking. It could be a minor, and you have to determine if it's a minor change or a major change. So I ha we have seen this. We picked. We didn't create this. This was in another, uh, at least one other um, decision that was issued by the ZBA. Mr. Malloy, you have your hands up. Yeah, staff would not recommend waiving or granting this waiver. So that's we've communicated that uh, it is a blanket waiver, and you know, in the decision, we enumerate a number of th things that are considered insubstantial and don't need um, to be reviewed by the zoning board, and then. Like Attorney Fryman said, there are things that need to be reviewed, but we would not, you know, have this waiver. Um, you know, we we try to identify everything that is needed, and so to have this blanket waiver, meaning any other local bylaw, if we miss it here, is just waived without uh, review. That's something that the building commissioner and staff wouldn't recommend. Okay, so well, you kind of confirm my my initial concern about this is it's over the broad waiver. Um, 
So we've gone through the waiver. Are there any additional waiver requests? This is it for the time being, right? For 31? All right, so let's just. That's correct. So the ones that we, most all of these, you know, are, can be approved. Let's just run through the ones that either we're going having uh, more work coming back to us or we're, we aren't, um, that we have some ones that we have concern about, like the last one. Um, Attorney Murray, do you, have you kept a list of these? Which ones? I, I have. Do you, do you want me to go through them, Mr. Just, Chair? Just give us the numbers, the ones that... Um, I have I have number two, needing some language. About the management plan? Yep. 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 Uh, number three, as to the, the actual height of the shed. All right. Okay. I want to hear my pages. Bear with me. Yeah, I'm going through. Um, would it, would if we set a shed now to exceed twelve feet in height, would that be sufficient? It should solve the problem, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. That's yep, I think that's fine. Most of the other ones were explained. 16, I think, with respect to the sign, um, we just needed a little more detail as to where that, you know, where the sign would be placed. Yep. That's 16. Yep. And then the uh, Com, com, then the rest of them, I think, are okay, aren't they? Until yeah, we well, get... we'll come back to you with regard to um, 26 and 27. Yep. 20, okay. Yep. 26 and 27. All right. And that is it. And then the last one, 29, we're concerned about that. That waiver is the catch all waiver. All right, so um, I think we've gone through these waivers. Um, we've got some work on it. We'll come back next week, but I think we, when we go through the waivers the next time, we've pretty much eliminated a lot of the discussion that we need to have and just will focus on coming back for the ones that we had identified as having concerns about at our next meeting. Any comments from board members before we go to break? and then come back and do the waivers for um, Belcher Town Road. I, if, if I may ask um, the applicant one question on number 29, um, what is the impediment or downside if we deny this request, number 29? Um, I think uh, uh, we just have to come back if there was something that we saw that was inaccurate. Um, it wasn't reflected correctly in the decision that was part of what was already what was approved. Again, it's not changed. We're not changing anything as far as what's been submitted or what um, been approved. It's just how it how it's characterized in the in the um, decision itself. I I don't know that this that it will be a problem, but it's it's just kind of a protection provision, saving time and avoiding us having to come back. But there's also- I'm gonna look uh, at the, I'm gonna find where we've, you know, what other decisions where this was granted and see if it was a, you know, we can talk about it. All right. I but think it was, uh, sorry, I think it was the Valley CDC decision for Ball Lane that had a similar waiver. But there also is provision saying that um, you can, the building commission can, allow for movement of buildings and it, based upon um, ledge or it, it, if it's two feet this way or two feet that way, there's some flexibility already that the building commissioner can approve um, construction, even mm -hmm. though it is not um, 
exactly what's in the site the approved site plan yeah no this is more if there was um, a portion of a, a waiver a portion of a provision that should have been waived and it wasn't included yeah. in something you know that that situation okay does that answer your question mr henry it does thank you mr chair yeah. all right well let's take a it's 7 41 let's take a five minute break mr meadows you get a chance to call your engineer um, I'm going to get a drink of water and we'll all be back and go through the waivers for the Belchertown Road site at, in, at 746.
All right. Uh, it's 7.47. Good timing. So I think the next thing we should do is go through the uh, requested waivers for the 70 Belcher Town Road. A lot of these are similar. Uh, there are some differences, but a lot of these are similar. Um, so, Mr. Gruber. Um, yes, I would ask just if um, before we start, um, was um, Mr. Meadows able to um, discuss with his engineer, just our my engineer um, is here and um, if, if we were I, I saw Mr. Meadows, he was on the phone, so I'm, I'm not yes. sure. Okay. I'm on the phone with him now. Oh. So, Mr. Meadows, when you do uh, get an answer, we, we can break into the waiver request so that they're um, engineer and, and you can speak about um, that issue, okay? All right, um, so let's start with waiver number one, prohibited uses. This, this allows for multifamily development that would not otherwise be allowed uh, on this single lot. So, I mean, that has to be done in order to build this project. Number two is um, construction within 100 feet of a FEMA flood zone in a flood prone conservancy area. Again, this is, I think this is a com, -com issue. Um, and Mr. Malloy or Ms. Williams, where's, what's the status of ComCom -com approval? They're, they're inclined to approve, but they just didn't have enough, uh, didn't have a quorum at the last meeting. Is that what, you, is that the case? That's essentially it, Mr. Chair. Okay. So if there is a problem, we'll know about it before we have final approval. That is correct, yes. So two doesn't seem to be a problem. Um, three, I think, is the same thing we had with uh, number two in the last one, whereas I want to make sure that we, we're not waiving the, the management plan. It's the same issue. I don't think we have to go into more detail of that. Um, four is filling of land, which is all, I, I don't think that's done on, on the, at all on the other side. So I'm assuming that you've worked with the town and they're comfortable with the, the site plan, the grading and all that kind of stuff that the, the normal, that the requirement and the limitation on, on fill, uh, which we, we have in, in the bylaw has been, will be exceeded by this and the town and has looked at that and is not, is not concerned about it. Is that correct? Mr. Malloy? Correct. Or, yeah, yeah, correct. So as part of the project, yeah. you know, they are bringing up Phil, so that, that that's all fine. Yep, gotta do it. Okay, uh, we've got this uh, five and, oh, Mr. Meadows, I see you're back. I'm back. Yep. Um, Let's your if, issue. if we could have the piping plan put back up again, please. Yeah, I'll just share my screen here. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I don't know that this is in the upper left hand corner. There were some indicators there what after the temperature mr gray do you know uh, yeah that basically tells us that it it can operate at low temperatures it, that's the uh the catalog data shows that it can go down um negative four to negative 13 degrees uh, that's what that indicates there so that's the low temperature limit yes Okay, so if we get down below negative 13, does the system uh, have a diminishing amount of output or does it stop? The system actually will continue operating down to negative 18. Uh, it will be at, at a diminished output below zero degrees. Do you have a graph as to what that output might be below zero? 
I can get that for you. That's in the engineering manual. I don't have that available right now, but I can get that for you. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Meadows, on this issue? I think that's it. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we've um, no problem with number four, number five. This is the same issue on um, a, a shed language that says up to 12 feet. I think solved my problem. I don't know we need to do anything more than that. Number six is temporary construction fencing. Um, it's shown on the way permit requirements for all fences shown on the project plan and include this part of the comprehensive permit. I think, I don't think that's an issue. Dimensional regulations um, for, I mean, it's, it's, it's more dense and is allowed by the uh, zoning bylaw, but that's the nature of the property and the nature of the project. Number eight is um, minimum setback. This, I misspoke earlier. Um, this is a place where you're trying to bring them a little bit closer to the, the street so that it feels less like a, it feels more like a village. I think that's what you wanted to accomplish here. Nate, I think, right? One of the things is trying to bring it a little bit closer. Um, so it feels like it's um, all part of a, a village down there in, in that part of Amherst. Part of the reason for this, correct? Correct, yeah. So the original site design was uh, maybe the building was set back a bit more yep. and the town wanted to have a, yeah, a village scape there, a streetscape. Um, lot coverage. It's what you need for the you need for parking and for the building. Um, this exceeds that. It exceeds it on dimensional regulations for height. This one is more significant. It's as opposed to 35, a roof height of 41. Um, but that's what you need to get for the three the three stories as well as the um, the additional um, me mechanical things on the top of the building. I think right. Uh, parking here we have um, practically one to one one parking place for each proposed dwelling unit close to it 52 to 47 um, we've discussed that a lot I don't know if people have problems with the, um, the waiver granting a waiver for the number of parking spaces design standards parking dimensions number 12 this really, if I'm correct, this mostly deals with the need for the number of compact spaces. That's, that's really what we're looking at here because we don't have any site work construction standards to deal with. So can you explain that waiver for us? There are um, there are compact spaces on the on the property, um, and I can pull up a. Let me see if I can pull up my the site plan here. So, what's the waiver that you need there? Um, to allow. To allow 12 compact spaces as part of the otherwise we would need another permit to re or, you know come to the zba and the planning board to allow for compact spaces which is a instead of nine by 18 they're eight by 16. so we really waiving the approval process to do that got it and that's what you so that's included in the project plan and in the, the site work right got it okay i don't have any problem with that um, design standards and landscape standards. This deals with indoor bike storage for residents. And you have 48 indoor bicycle racks, correct? Yes. And by waiving this, we in effect have granted the design location number of bike racks shall be approved by the special permit granting board as part of the 
approval of a permit. Okay. Number 14 is landscape standards dealing with parking areas, screening of parking areas. Can you bring up the, just bring up the um, site plan for Belchertown Road? Yes, let me just pull that up. I think most, the only place we have to worry about this is the neighbors, the budding neighbors to one side. Behind it is conservation land. So I don't think this is a big issue. Can you all see my screen? Yep. Yep, so here's um, the driveway aisle and then there were some uh, plant things that were added uh, by the dumpster area here and we provide um, the plantings here that are, I, I confirmed with our landscape architect, this, this planting row would be roughly six to eight feet tall when they're planted um initially and the area over here is the wetland area that's wooded and, and there's a um there's some plantings that create a buffer between the wetland area but it's there's um and then this is just seeded down into the um bioretention area here so we do provide we do provide this here on this side it's it's you know what as you mentioned it's the conservation area so all right I'm not, I'm not concerned with that waiver. Number 15 is sign regulations. We should, we should just be consistent with this, or the same thing we're doing with 31, the Southeast Street. And again, with 16, I think it's the same issue. 17, we want to be consistent with what we just discussed on, on, the, on the Southeast Street. Site, site plan review, again, speak up if you're, if you have a question about any of this. Site plan review, number 18, um, we have a more robust process in site plan review, so that could be waived. Uh, Hard curb cuts, we had the same issue on Southeast. We approved that. Wetlands protection, again, this all comes down to what the ComCom says when they finally meet, so we'll deal with that um, if, if there is a need for something, yes. We're not meeting until December 4th, and we'll be, um, so we'll be back here next week. So I guess then we we'll, this would not be finalized until the 12th, is that the idea? Well, uh, uh, yeah, these won't. Okay. These uh, 20 and 21 wouldn't be finalized until then. Okay. But, but that's, I mean, it all, we have to wait for the ComCom whenever they. Right, right. I just wanted to tell you that we wouldn't be, we're not going back till the fourth. So. The ComCom, yeah. Okay. So that's 20, 21 and 22. 23. Uh, so the, the build, the house that they're de demolishing is, uh, Historic house. That's the need. That must be the need for this. Yeah, and we have the sign off from the um, Mass Historical Commission. Great. Um, and then we've got the for twenty three and twenty four. It's the same issue that we had with uh, mm -hmm. with but with the Southeast Street. I want to make sure that the approval you get the approval without undue delay, but the approval from the DPW. Um, Water Connect 25 is the same issue. 26 is consultation with the tree warden. I, you know, I, I don't feel that we need the tree warden to, um, to look at all the, the trees. You've identified the ones you want to put on the, um, that, you, that you're removing on the site plans and we have some conditions that we'll deal with replacing trees that, that die because of the construction work. So I think this is fine. And, and a lot of the, the trees are, are on the, uh, will be pointed, will be taken down, but the um, screening is only to the, con to the conservation land. Uh, development per plans. 
the same issue we had in the last one that we've got to get some in, more information on. So I, I, I think we kind of went through a lot of this already um, on the waivers, Attorney Murray. So just again, I, what I think we should probably do for the next meeting is highlight those that we have a, either a question about and then the ones that we're that I'm concerned about, which, and I think the board is, uh, which we're concerned about and don't want to, not inclined to grant, and then have that prepared for the next meeting. And there's some information that we're going to get from, um, like on a couple of these, and we can build that for the next, um, the next time we deal with conditions. But I don't, unless people feel differently, I don't think we need to go over conditions again until we're prepared to do the final approval of conditions, and that could be, uh, that could be you know you know, a couple of meetings from now. All right. Okay. So it's, it's 8.03. It seems to me, uh, Mr. Gruber. I, yes, thank you. I would just like to check to see if, uh, uh, Mr. Gray was able to find the, um, find that graph that he could, um, show Mr. Meadows. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. I can pull that up one second. Can you all see my screen? Yep. Yeah, so at five degrees, you get 100% uh, of the expected capacity out. At, at zero, you get around 92%. At negative five, you get just over 80%. And this is this is the graph for for heating. It looks like actually it goes down to negative twenty, and then at that point, the operation and ranges. It, it, it's not recommended operating beyond that. What do you do in that case if if you get a well, if we get negative 20, that's probably not as likely as but what happens if it shuts down? Yeah, it will shut down at that point. Yeah, we, you know, we design the design for the design conditions yep. on, on the, on the project uh, as required. Um, so it, Obviously, we're we're not designing for negative twenty. Either. I know it's some of the the HVAC. Um, I guess it's it, it's they have an additional um, gas or electric heater that comes in for some of the uh, the more efficient air handlers that um, air exchangers. I guess it is. They have, you have to get a, a, a sub, you can buy a supplemental system, but that's not something you're thinking about. If, when you get, you've just built this for 20 below, and if it hits 20 below, people are going to be cold, they're going to be in blankets. And, well, and, yeah, right? I mean, uh, that that's almost a doomsday scenario, but yeah. um, we, no, we, I know. we do have ventilation units that have electric resistance heating, so the building is not going to be freezing. Um, in that case, the, the, those units are are to operate as long as the building is occupied, and they will provide heating um, for the building. And in a measure, it's not uh, going to be the the full design, but the, it will not let the building freeze. Mr. Meadows, do you um, just give you all the information you wanted? Yeah, and are, are you saying, Mr. Gray, that, that these Mitsubishi units have got supplemental electric resistance no, built into we them? Have, we have separate separate heaters throughout the building um, that are supplemental and uh, electrical heaters um, that are electric resistance. They're not relying on a heat pump. And then we also have 
ventilation units, ERV units that are providing ventilation air that is heated. Um, so that, that air does not rely on a heat pump. It relies on electric resistance heating, which can operate under any condition as long as the unit is still operable. Um, so that will provide heating to the building and to offset you know, the lo low temperature condition. It won't allow the building to freeze. All right. Hopefully we're not getting 20 below. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we, I remember the last time we had 20 below for more than five days in a row. About 40 years ago. <laughs> I was cold. Yeah. Well, you couldn't do this in Minnesota. You'd have to have more electrical resistance heating as a backup, but we're not in Minnesota. We're in Western Mass. All right. Yeah. Any other questions regarding um, the waivers or anything else? I guess what I would like to, what I thought of doing, Mr. Gruber. Um, yes, I just had I one, one question uh, regarding uh, the timing of um, the, I guess maybe like supplemental or revised sheets, um, you know, drawings such as at Belchertown Road, we had, you know, the, the parking had adjusted as you had, you know, where it was presented to the board, just the timing of when those sheets would be, um, you know, provided to the the board and and how those would be referenced in the um in the decision. Well, um, before we take I, the standard answer, I think is before we proceed to the final approval, all the documents need to be uh, need to be uh, submitted to the board. I anticipate that we're going to meet. Um, next week on the we'll meet on the 21st mm -hmm. and then we next time meet on this on the is it the 12th, December 12th? Mm -hmm. it's december 12th so i anticipate that on the next week we'll go through the conditions mm -hmm. um in kind of do the same thing we did today go through first cut on submissions on, on conditions um and then we'll start the process of of um and I don't know that we'll get all that done. And then we'll we'll have the meeting in in December, where we can try to get as much we can work through the final finalization. And I would, you know, I think it's a possibility that we could finish this up in the December meeting. I think that's a possibility. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of it's not a lot of controversy here. We just have a lot of process to go through, and I think that's the. It's, it's, that's a real possibility. So if I were you, I would try to have everything ready for us on the, for the, that first December meeting. Um, and to the extent that you can get it for next week, some of the, even the waiver stuff to us for next week, we can try to resolve those out of the way. Um, that was does, that, does that seem reasonable? Uh, Nate? Mr. Malloy? Yeah, sure. I was going to say that, um, you know, there's other unresolved things besides waivers. Uh, the local preference hasn't been determined. Um, you know, and the marketing plan was there. So if not at the next meeting, the following meeting, you know, we could have a list of things that the board could consider. So I know local preference is something that may take time to discuss in terms of what's the right percentage. Right. But that's part of conditions, right? That's part of a condition. It is. It is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought I thought we discussed that in, in uh, the Wayfinders um, was that we would we would work with the town to request the maximum allowable at the seventy percent, um, you know, per the per the the funding agency. And that's what's in the the draft conditions is the seventy percent. But you know, somebody may want to want to um, amend that, change that number. A board member may have a issue on that but that is on we did discuss it we may want to discuss it again but it's part of a it's one of the conditions one of the hundred conditions that we have it, that it's at 70 percent of the draft conditions and you know so optimistically 
can we get done in December? That would be great. That would be great. It gives us all a um, holiday present. Um, if we don't get it done on the 20, uh, on the first meeting in December, where we have, how, what's the next meeting in December, Ms. Williams? So the next meeting, we, we only have the 19th um, is what we have for December. And then you would be into January 9th and 16th. All right. So just to clarify, we have the 12th and the 19th and then the 9th, correct? Well, we have the, the 12th for sure, the 19th. Don't we have a lot of uh, no? No. So here's here's what happened. Um, just so we're all clear, and I think I sent a couple of emails, but maybe they were not. Um, it wasn't communicated, or maybe it didn't resonate. Essentially, because this meeting today, which was supposed to be a half wayfinders meeting, became a full wayfinders meeting, um, we needed to reserve the twelfth for regular ZBA business, which means the 12th is now full ZBA business only, like for the town, it is not a wayfinders meeting because essentially the rest of the year would have just been wayfinders and the town would not accomplish anything on our end. So that is what happened. You essentially kind of got a bonus meeting today by having this meeting to yourself on the 14th. Um, so the next full wayfinders meeting is the 21st. The 28th is Thanksgiving, so that is obviously we're not meeting. And then the 12th, we as the town need that to process our own applications. So that is no wayfinders at all. Um, no, so your have, next we have four, we have four special permit or uh, various yes. requests for the 12th, right? Yes. And yeah. so the 19th is your next full wayfinders meeting. The 21st and then to the 19th. Yeah. Okay. Still, we have a shot at getting this done before before Christmas. So, and if not, we'll we'll be going into the next. We'll be yeah. going in on the sixteenth. Okay. All right. Are there questions? You know, I don't know that it makes sense to start going through the conditions. The applicant said they hadn't seen it until recently and hadn't had a chance to go through them. So I don't want to do this without um, them being having the opportunity to review it prior to the, the meeting. I mean, a lot of these are, are standard and um, boilerplate, but you know, I think you need to you need to have the time to go through it. So my feeling is that it doesn't make sense to go down go through the conditions at this point. And we'll be prepared for next week. Okay. So I would encourage. Uh, board members, take a look at the conditions. Um, I've done that. There's a lot of them. Um, if you've got questions about them, uh, just general questions. Don't hesitate to call staff and, and get clarification. Um, if not, we'll try to run through the conditions next week and make some decisions about the you know, preliminary decisions about those before we final on the, um, the meeting after. All right. Okay. So. Are there other questions regarding this from the board regarding this um, application, the special the comprehensive permit? Mr. Chair, do you want to just say, I don't know if there's anyone in the public? That was going to, that was going to be next. <laughs> yeah. before, I, before I leave this, I was going to ask about <laughs> public comment. I know we have 15 people. We have three attendees that's it dropped off. We. Yeah, they were here for Shootsbury, but um, I think they're a little disappointed, so. Let me just take you up, Mr. Chair, and ask one question. Sure. Um, with the parking situation where there's potentially only 14 lots um, and looking at the neighborhood with street parking, I mean, it is a busy street um, to actually have town resident park in there. Is, is there any contingency? Are you guys looking at anywhere else for possible offsite parking um, to maybe your adjacent building? Would that be, would you allow residents to park over there? Um, what is, is there any conversation around that? 
Um, well, currently the, the street does have on-site parking and in conversation with the town, it was to be a more formalized sort of, you know, parking scenario on the street. Um, I would let, you know, as far as, so there is, there is street parking there now. Um, and, you know, we felt with the on-site parking and on the on-street parking that there was, you know, it, it, an acceptable level of, of, of parking would be provided for the for the residents at that building. So I'm sorry, do I have it backwards? Belch is so the issue is not Belchtown Road. No. Okay. Yeah, we're talking about Southeast Street, correct? Okay, then yes. 14, yeah, with the 14 spots and then the additional um, like right in front of the building, I believe there's roughly could be as much as 10, you know, 10 parking spaces directly in front of the building on the street is that and then there's additional additional parking along the road there as well. And, you know, there was some discussion with the town or there's there, there's been discussion at our meetings that there is some consideration of the town about doing some residential parking restrictions or and I don't know the nature of those discussions if that's gone on with um, town council because they would have to make the decision to do that. But that I think Mr. Henry was, was one of the things that people were talking about is perhaps putting in a residential parking area out in front of the, the building to provide additional parking for the residents of that building. But Thank I'm, you. I'm not sure what the town council is, if they've looked at that at all. Mr. Malloy, In, do you know if there's been any discussion about that? Any further discussion? Uh, there's been no discussion at the council level, but um, between the departments that would look at that, public works, police, uh, treasurer, and planning, uh, uh, everyone supports it. It's just it's a little early to bring it to council. The, the town has plans to, you know, repave that road and do utility work there. And so at that time, probably next summer, that'll move forward um, with getting, you know, a residential permit in place for at least, you know, 10 to 15 parking spaces along that section of road. Because I think you're right, Mr. Henry, every time I drive past that area, those, there are people parked in front of the, the old school. Um, it's, it's not like that's an unused general parking area right now. Okay. Great. All right. Um, we have no, nobody from the general public wishes to speak. If you do, this is the time to do that. I don't see any hands. No, I see no hands. All right. Then uh, the next order of business is public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. Oh, before we do that, um, we want to continue this public hearing uh, until next week. So continue this public hearing until the 21st at 6 o'clock. Nope, 7 p.m. Oh, that's right. Thank you. You saved, my, you saved me for that 7 p.m. next week. Thank you very much. I have a, I cannot be here before seven o'clock next week. So I'm asking all you guys to give me that courtesy uh, to start the meeting at seven. Um, do I have a motion to continue this to seven o'clock on the 21st? So moved. Second. <clears throat> Seconded. Any discussion? If not, the vote occurs on the motion to continue this meeting till seven o'clock on the 21st. The chair votes aye. Mr. Henry? Aye. Mr. Sloboder? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Motion carries. Um, we'll continue this to the 21st. The next order of business is public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. We have no one in the attendees room. The last attendee just disappeared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are all gone. Um, we are a riveting bunch. <laughs> we, we really captured everybody's attention tonight. That's for darn sure. All right. Um, 
then there's the last order of business is anything not anticipated and we've already gone uh, in the last 48 hours we've already gone through the schedule so i think we've got everything on that um all done all right uh, next order of business is a motion to adjourn <clears throat> so moved it's been moved is there a second so seconded all right it's been moved and seconded. <clears throat> motion is not debatable. The chair votes aye. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Was that a vote? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mr. Sloviter. Aye. Mr. Henry. Aye. Mr. White. Aye. And Mr. Meadows. Aye. All right. We are all adjourned. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next week at 7 o'clock. Right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.